And I would want to add, and that's where we're going to leave off, at least as a background, many people say, well, why don't the Palestinians find a Gandhi? Why don't they engage in nonviolent resistance? That used to be a kind of talking point of so-called liberal Jews uh, in the US. Well, let's see what happened. In 2018, March 2018, the Palestinians in Gaza, attempting to break the siege of Gaza, engaged in massive, nonviolent, overwhelmingly nonviolent civil resistance. How did Israel react to that overwhelmingly nonviolent civil resistance? There was a very thorough, surprisingly thorough, I would say, UN report on the subject. It said that in the course of the Great March of Return, you might recall, because it's not yet ancient history, there were the Israeli snipers assembled along the periphery of Gaza. Who did the snipers kill? Well, according to the UN report, they targeted children, they targeted journalists, they targeted medics, they targeted disabled people. They targeted people 300 meters away from the periphery. They targeted, if you read the descriptions, and the descriptions are very vivid and detailed, they targeted people who were standing by a tree, just standing there. They targeted photographers who were just standing there, journalists and also civilian photographers. That is the reality of the state of Israel. It's very hard for, say, my generation to assimilate that reality because our view, I mean, my generation and before my generation, one and two generations before, our conception of a Jew was if you were to say the kind of prototype, it would be an Albert Einstein kind of unworldly, the hair flying out. It used to be said of Einstein that at Princeton, he was the Institute for Advanced Studies. He would walk around barefoot and when he was told you're barefoot, he said, oh, I forgot to put on my shoes. That was the, the otherworldly type that was a Jew. I should grab my dad. He's in the other room. I'm not kidding. It was Franz Kafka, the big ears, the physically a little bit feeble. And for American Jews, the type, the prototype, and I'm not being facetious here. I do think it's accurate. I you know this is a serious occasion and I'll do my darndest to maintain the uh, moral sobriety that it requires, um, it's Woody Allen, you know, the horn rim glasses. Ashkenazic. <laughs> well, you get the type, you know the type. Yeah. And then it was just very hard to convince Jews of my generation that a Jew could do this sort of stuff, you know, line up along a perimeter with Gaza this world's largest concentration camp, this world's largest open air prison. You have a population of about a little over a million children who have been confined, trapped in this area. The length of a marathon, the width of half of Brooklyn, the width, not the population, the width of half of Brooklyn. And they're not going to let them out. And if they try nonviolently, peacefully to free themselves, 
you're going to get mowed down. Mowed down. Uh, that's the reality of Israel. And um, I think it's a lot of, it's, uh, for your generation and the generation after, it's not so hard to digest, you know, because you, you, you kind of see Israel for what it is. But my generation, the preceding ones, we didn't see what Israel for what it is. We saw Israel for what Jews were. And a Jew just didn't do those things.